As Theodosius Javjansky once said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. The Academy's Brian Simison is getting to the heart of the work researchers do here. Whether birds, beetles, begonias, or barnacles, our brilliant scientists work hard to reveal the evolutionary relationships of the organisms they study. And Brian plays a key role in that work, running the CCG lab. The CCG is the Center for Comparative Genomics. It is a core facility here, and it serves to provide research with the latest tools and techniques in the burgeoning field of genomics and DNA evolution. Brian was working part-time at the Academy as a postdoc, running an earlier, more humble version of the lab in 2007, when he pitched the idea of what the lab could become to the Academy's executive director, Greg Farrington. He finally said, well, why aren't we doing this already? And basically hired me on the spot as a full curator, and we were gonna, he found money somehow to build this lab. And here we are now with a state-of-the-art facility here at the California Academy of Sciences. The Center for Comparative Genomics also contains a supercomputer and a frozen DNA collection that supports the work that happens in the DNA sequencing lab. Sequencing genes takes about two days, beginning with the tissues of a particular organism. So the first step is we bring in our leaves or feathers or hair or some other tissue into a specific room dedicated to extracting and purifying all of the DNA in the cells in those particular tissues. So that will include your nuclear DNA, that's your chromosomes, it can include mitochondrial DNA, and if you're a plant, it'll include the chloroplast DNA as well. And we call this genomic DNA. So when we leave this room with a little tiny tube holds about one and a half mils, you have purified DNA. So the next step is to set up for the polymerase chain reaction, which is the PCR reaction. This will target a specific gene and make millions and millions of copies of it. So the next step is to add all the reagents and chemicals necessary to do this. And essentially, we recreate the environment in your cells that are going on right now that duplicates or replicates your DNA. Once we get our hundreds of millions of copies, the next step is to actually determine the nucleotide sequence of that gene. That is the order of A's, G's, and C's, and T's. So we also need to add special nucleotides that are tagged with unique colors or dyes, and they get incorporated in these millions of copies along the length, and then this will eventually be run over a DNA analyzer that will actually see these different colors and tell you the sequence of the DNA. And we eventually use these sequences to compare different animals or plants to each other and see who's more closely related to who. We eventually build a phylogenetic tree or an evolutionary history of the animals or plants of interest. Brian is currently using the CCG lab for one of his own research projects. With collaborators, he is studying invasive red-eared slider turtles, former pets released into the wild across the U.S. And so we're trying to understand the consequences of the genetics of these turtles mixing with the native turtles. The native populations are basically getting genetic pollution. They are receiving genes from these invasive species and changing their dynamics and may make them less fit for their native habitats. And if we can help identify what the hybrids look like and, and match it to its genetic profile, then we have a strong foundation for informing conservation policy and management decisions that can be made down the road.